The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. To it our Lord Jesus Christ said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit, let us pray. O God, the King of glory, who, exalt, who hast exalted thine only Son, Jesus Christ, with great triumph unto thy kingdom in heaven, we beseech thee, leave us not comfortless, but send to us thine Holy Ghost to comfort us, and exalt us unto the same place where our Savior Christ is gone before, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the same Holy Ghost, one God, world without end. Amen. Grant, we beseech thee, Almighty God, that like as we do believe thy only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, to have ascended into the heavens, so we may also in heart and mind thither ascend, and with him continually dwell, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Ghost, one God, world without end. Amen. Amen. The epistle is written in the fourth chapter of the first epistle of St. Peter, beginning at the seventh verse. The end of all things is at hand. Be ye therefore sober and watch unto prayer. And above all things, have fervent charity among yourselves. For charity shall cover the multitude of sins. Use hospitality one to another without grudging. As every man hath received the gift, even so minister the one to another, as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. If any man minister, let him do it as of the ability which God giveth, that God in all things may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom be praise and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Here endeth the epistle. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel is written in the 15th chapter of the Gospel according to St. John, beginning at the 26th verse. Glory be to thee, O Lord. <clears throat> Jesus said, When the Comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me. And ye also shall bear witness, because ye have been with me from the beginning. These things have I spoken unto you, that ye should not be offended. They shall put you out of the synagogues, Yea, the time cometh that whosoever killeth you will think that he doeth God's service. And these things will they do unto you because they have not known the Father nor me. But these things have I told you that when the time shall come, ye may remember that I told you of them. Praise be to thee, O Christ. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under the Pontius Pilate. 
he suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of the Father. And he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. The Ascension is many times an overlooked aspect of the life of Christ. It's an overlooked work of Christ, or an or, or overlooked phase in his ministry. Uh, but each week, uh, or any time the whole Eucharist is celebrated in the prayer of consecration, we have these four, this memorable group of four. Christ's blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection, and glorious ascension. And each of these parts are parts of the bigger work that Christ did in redeeming the world. And that list is important. We make much over Christ's death and his resurrection in particular. The passion or the start of his suffering which commenced during the Last Supper as he hands bread to Judas and he urges him to go and do quickly what you have to do, which was the betrayal of Christ as we know and the beginning of his passion. And then the other, which is what we are concentrated on today, and that is the ascension. The ascension is a work of Christ in that it moves the plan of redemption along to the next stage. As a member of the Holy Trinity, Christ's work began from, really, the foundations of the world. The scriptures tell us this. Ephesians chapter 1, Paul says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, even as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before him. Before the very foundations of the world were laid, in other words, before God said, let there be light, in the mind of God was a plan of redemption, and he knew us as his chosen and beloved, even at that time. St. Peter also has this to say about the eternal nature of Christ, his redemption, and our being brought in to share in his glory through the ascension. He says in his first letter, uh, first chapter too, he says, Christ was foreknown before the foundation of the world, but was made manifest in the last times for the sake of you, who through him are believers in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory so that your faith and hope are in God. So God glorifies Christ. He glorified Christ in his work, and we see that in, the great, in great part today in the Ascension. Christ says in his high priestly prayer that he utters on the night of his betrayal, in fact, on the night of his passion, in John 17, he, he says, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, that, your, that the Son may glorify you, since you have given him authority over all flesh, to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth, having accomplished the work that you gave me to do. And now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had with you before the world existed. So as Christ ascended back up to the Father on that day, he returned to his place and state of glory. Christ is always glorious, of course. He's glorious in all that he does. But here it's focused on the ascending back to that place with the Father and the Holy Spirit in the heavenly realm. And these passages all paint for us such a, a glorious image of Christ as well. And our collect, our prayer for today does this also. We start to see more of the significance uh, of today distilled in this prayer. We prayed, if you recall, O God, the King of glory, who has exalted thine only Son, Jesus Christ, with great triumph unto thy heavenly kingdom. We beseech thee, leave us not comfortless, but send to us 
thine Holy Ghost to comfort us and exalt us unto the same place where our Savior Christ is gone before, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Ghost, one God, world without end. So there's so God here, the Father, called is called the King of Glory, and he has exalted Christ in his ascension to return to his place of glory as well. The ascension is seen also as a triumphal feat by Christ. Much focus, again, is placed on the resurrection of Christ, and rightly so. We just uh, did that, uh, observed that a few weeks ago, but we should think a lot about the ascension as well. This whole return of Christ to heaven was quite an event in the eyes of those who were in the eternal realm, at least. Yes, the disciples saw Christ, Christ rise up in a cloud, be taken out of their sight, but the ascension is Christ's actual inauguration ceremony. It is his inauguration parade. This was the victorious king returning from battle with the forces of death and hell, and he is victorious. By his rising from, from the dead, of course, we know he defeats the power of death. Death has no more dominion over him nor over us. We will die, but that is not the end for us. We will rise to newness of life in the world to come, the world where Christ is, where he has ascended and is now ruling and reigning. But his ascension is victorious. It's a, the victorious parade of the king of glory back to his throne as he returns from battle. He who was for a little while lower than the angels, made lower than the angels, has now been crowned with glory and honor by the Father. And why is he crowned with glory and honor? As Hebrews says, because he tasted death for everyone. He tasted death, he dies fully and really, as we all do. He tasted the cup of death and he drank it down to the very dregs. He drank it so that he might be, even in death, like us. Hebrews goes on to say, therefore, he had to be made like his brothers, like us, in every respect, so that he might become a merciful and faithful high priest in the service of God, to make propitiation for the sins of the people. For because he himself has suffered when tempted, he is able to help those who are being tempted as well. But once he drank of it, <clears throat> we see him laying that cup aside and rising from the dead, the taste of death gone from him forever. He will never die again, and he brings that gift to us as we join to him in faith. The work of Christ in dying and rising and redeeming is so important to the Father that it is said to be a reward. Christ is rewarded for his faithfulness even unto death. And he was consequently raised from the dead and ascended into heaven to receive the victory crown which rightly belongs to him as that reward. At the same time, the Father has put everything in subjection under Christ's feet as it is right now. This is all under the heading of what we call the session of Christ. This comes from the Latin word sessio, which simply means the act of sitting. Christ, upon ascending back up into heaven, it says he sat down on his throne. We confess this, of course, in the creed. You'll recall that we say, each time we confess the creed, we say, and the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of the Father. And he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. So he sat down at the right hand of the Father. In other words, he returns to his place with the Father. The right hand is the place of honor, of course. And Christ received that honor by winning that honor by the work that he does for us. St. Paul has a <clears throat> a beautiful summarizing of the entire event of Christ's ascension in Ephesians chapter 4, beginning at the 8th verse. Paul writes, When he ascended on high, he led a host of captives, and he gave gifts to men. Now this is a quote from the Old Testament, with Paul making an alteration, a clarifying modification, in fact. Seeing that this is a triumph song of David's, <clears throat> Paul sees in this passage, its application to the ascension of Christ. So th this, is, this is military, this is warfare language. The general, Christ, conquered 
death and sin. He wins the war, and now he receives tribute and plunder from the defeated, and he distributes the spoils to the soldiers, to the troops. And we, of course, are those soldiers in that battle that he's already won for us, and now we get the spoils of war, the spoils of victory. The spoils are this, victory over death and the gift of life everlasting. St. Jerome, back in the 4th, 5th century, <clears throat> he has a, a quote on this. He says, It was a nice touch for Paul to write here that Christ gave gifts to humanity when what is written in Psalm 68 is that he received gifts among humanity. Why the difference, he asks. He says, Since in the psalm the act had not yet occurred but was promised in the future, the phrase was accordingly, he received. But the apostle is seeing this as a promise earlier given and then later fulfilled. At this time of writing, Christ has already made the gift and churches have been established throughout the whole world. Accordingly, he is said to have already given to humanity rather than received gifts from humanity. Unquote. But St. Paul, of course, he's not finished with his glorious rendition of the ascension either. He says, in saying that Christ ascended, what does it mean but that he had also descended to the lower regions of the earth? He came down to earth. He who descended is the one who also ascended, far above all the heavens that he might fill all things. And he says, kind of consequently, he gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the shepherds, the teachers, to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ, until we all attain to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to mature manhood, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. So the ascension is quite glorious, as you can see it is here. The birth of Christ, of course, is glorious, but very few witnessed it that, uh, that night. Uh, the death of Christ is horrific, of course, to those who witnessed that. The resurrection of Christ was glorious, but no one really saw that event. No one was inside the tomb. Christ is risen, and now he is seen uh, uh, outside, alive. Not that the risen Christ is nothing to behold, but the ascension has all this glorious language surrounding it of, of victor victor victory and crowns and <clears throat> thrones that we don't, it's amazing we don't spend uh, much time thinking about it more often. We have not even scratched the surface, of course, of what the ascension means and the lessons today that are uh, that, were, that you heard read the Epistle and Gospel have been kind of eclipsed by what I've been talking about here. So to give a nod to Saints Peter and John, as we owe them today, Peter in his Epistle lesson for us briefly, he wants us to keep this glory of the Ascension in the forefront of our minds and let it, he says, make it, let, us, let it make us sober, sober-minded. We'd be sober, he says, and watchful unto prayer. And then St. John has words for, for us as well. He says, John, of course, is still giving passages relating to Jesus and his promise to send the Holy Spirit. And we've dealt heavily with that over the last few weeks because uh, these weeks are designed, designed to keep us looking forward to the coming of the Holy Spirit. And the Spirit will come for those who heard Jesus say it, and he is here with us now for those of us who live in these times. But as, as Peter does, so does Jesus in warning us why being sober-minded unto prayer is so important. Though Christ has ascended, and the victory is won, and the king has returned to his kingdom, and he sat down on his throne, the battleground is not yet completely cleared of all landmines. We still live in the world, looking for the resurrection of the dead. But in the meantime, the difficulties of post-war times remain with us. Satan has been defeated, but he's not done working to gather men unto himself. The church is continually under assault. These things, Jesus warned the church would happen, though, so we can't be surprised. But this is the beauty of a day like today, where we have such an overwhelming message of victory, that the reminder of our lives can be, that our lives can be lived in confidence and hope and joy and in anticipation, all in a sober manner. So no matter what we suffer from, Calvin has a nice quote on this. He says, the noblest triumph which God ever gained was when Christ after subduing sin, conquering death, and putting Satan to flight, he rose majestically to heaven that he might exercise his glorious reign over the church. 
No ascension of God more triumphant or memorable will ever occur than that which took place when Christ was carried up to the right hand of the Father that he might rule over all authorities and powers and might become the everlasting guardian and protector of his people. So very true. Through this noble triumph, Christ rules and reigns right now. He guards and protects us. Through this noble triumph for the ascension, Satan has been defeated. Death has no more dominion over those of us who are in Christ because the final blow has been dealt to all of it. And the Holy Spirit comes and he testifies to our spirit that these things are true. So remember the importance of the ascension of Christ. Remember the glory of Christ's victory. And may we also ascend in heart and mind ourselves now and look forward to our rising to new life with him in the kingdom of heaven where he will rule and reign forever from his throne. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Holy Eucharist is offered this day as always to the greater glory of God and thanksgiving today for the great ascension of our Lord Jesus Christ where he is now currently sitting at the right hand uh, on his throne with the Father ruling and reigning right now over us and for us. So may we continually turn our hearts and minds uh, heavenward as we also, as we live in this age looking for the age to come. Praying also uh, for the reopening of our churches ever drawing nearer, hopefully maybe within the next few weeks or so. As well. So let us pray for the whole state of Christ Church. Almighty and ever living God, who by thy holy apostle has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, we humbly beseech thee, most mercifully, to accept our alms and oblations and to receive these our prayers, which we offer unto thy divine majesty beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord. And grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. We beseech thee also so to direct and dispose the hearts of all Christian rulers, that they may truly and impartially minister justice to the punishment of wickedness and vice and to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. Give grace, Heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers, especially Mark, our Metropolitan, Stephen, our Bishop, and Sean, our Deacon, that they may, both by their life and doctrine, set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. And we now humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life, in thy faith and fear. Beseeching thee to grant them continual growth in thy love and service, and to give us grace so to follow their good examples, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Ye who do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins, and are in love and charity with your neighbors, and intend to lead a new life, following the commandments of God, and walking from henceforth in his holy ways. Draw near with faith, and make your humble confession to Almighty God, devoutly kneeling. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, 
we acknowledged and bewailed our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We have earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. The burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what comfortable words our Savior Christ saith unto all who truly turn to him. Come unto me, all ye that travail, and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. So God loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Hear also what St. Paul said, This is a true saying and worthy of all men to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear also what St. John said, If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is meet and right so to do. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God. Through thy most dearly beloved Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who after his most glorious resurrection manifestly appeared to all his apostles, and in their sight ascended up into heaven to prepare a place for us, that where he is, thither we might also ascend and reign with him in glory. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord Most High. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. All glory be to thee, almighty God, our heavenly Father, for that thou of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption who made there, by his one oblation of himself once offered, a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world. And it institute, and it is holy gospel, command us to continue a perpetual memory of that, his precious death and sacrifice, until his coming again. For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he brake it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, According to the institution of thy dearly beloved Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, we, thy humble servants, do celebrate and make here before thy divine majesty with these thy holy gifts, which we now offer unto thee, the memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, 
his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, rendering unto thee most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits procured unto us by the same. And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us, and of thy almighty goodness, vouchsafe thee, bless and sanctify with thy word and Holy Spirit these thy gifts and creatures of bread and wine, that we, receiving them according to thy Son, our Savior Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness, mercifully to accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee, that we and all others who shall be partakers of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and made one body with him, that he may dwell in us and we in him. And although we are unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this, our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses, through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you, and with thy spirit. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, grant us thy peace. We do not presume to, to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but that thou art the same Lord whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, O gracious Lord, so, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. <clears throat> behold the Lamb of God, behold him that taketh away the sins of the world. Lord, I'm not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my soul shall be healed. Lord, I'm not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my soul shall be healed. Lord, I'm not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my soul shall be healed. Of your Lord Jesus Christ, which is given for thee. Preserve thy body and soul to everlasting life. Take and eat this in remembrance of Christ. Died for thee and feed on him in thy heart by faith with thanksgiving. The blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was shed for thee, preserve thy body and soul to everlasting life. Drink this in remembrance that Christ's blood was shed for thee.
I now invite you to make a spiritual communion. Please repeat this prayer after me. In union with thee, O Lord Christ. In union with thee, O Lord Christ. The faithful at every altar of the church. The faithful at every altar of the church. Where thy blessed body and blood. Where thy blessed body and blood. Are being offered to the Father. Are being offered to the Father. I desire to offer thee praise and thanksgiving. I desire to offer thee praise and thanksgiving. I believe that thou art truly present in the Holy Sacrament. I believe that thou art truly present in the Holy Sacrament. And since I cannot now receive thee physically, and since I cannot now receive thee physically, I beseech thee to come spiritually into my heart. I beseech thee to come spiritually into my heart. Unite me unto thee. Unite me unto thee. And help me to embrace thee. And help me to embrace thee. With all the affections of my soul. With all the affections of my soul. Let me live and die in thy love. Let me live and die in thy love. Come, Lord Jesus, dwell in thy servant. Come, Lord Jesus, dwell in thy servant. In the fullness of thy strength. In the fullness of thy strength. In the perfection of thy ways. In the perfection of thy ways. And in the holiness of thy spirit. And in the holiness of thy spirit. Rule over every hostile power. Rule over every hostile power. In the might of thy spirit. In the might of thy spirit. And to the glory of the Father. And to the glory of the Father. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Preserve my body and soul unto everlasting life. Preserve my body and soul unto everlasting life. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit, let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we, we most heartily thank thee for that thou dost vouchsafe to feed us who have duly received these holy mysteries with the spiritual food and the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby of thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are very members and corporate in the mystical body of thy Son, which is the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom, by the merits of his most precious death and passion. And we humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship, and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Glory be to God on high, and on earth, peace, goodwill towards men. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee, we give thanks to thee for thy great glory.
the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For Thou only art holy, Thou only art the Lord. Thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.